Okay, trig ratios, lesson two. Pythagoras should be review. Hopefully we all know how to do this. Okay, instead of using these letters, we're gonna switch it up a bit. This is called a unit circle. It's a circle where the center is the origin. Okay, and we're gonna draw a radius of this circle. That's the, from any, the, the center to any edge point on the circle, right? These are all radiuses. So that's the one we want to look at. If I put a point here, P, how do I get to that point? What are the coordinates of that point? X, Y, right? Okay, for whatever value of x, for whatever value of y. Okay, so is this a right angle triangle? Yes, it is. So what c here? c is our radius. So c squared, r squared equals a, doesn't matter which leg is which, you can go y squared plus x squared, that's the same as x squared plus y squared, doesn't matter, right? Okay, where r is the radius is greater than zero, well, if it wasn't, then you wouldn't have a circle. So it's kind of redundant. Okay, so this is called a unit circle. What happens if I reflect this point over the y-axis and throw it over there? What would the coordinates of this point q be? Yeah, same distance, only it's negative, same height, that's a distance of y, okay? And that's also a radius, isn't it? So here, how would this length of this r be any different than this length of this r? That's still a radius. Should it be the same length? Is it going to be? Yeah, because if you go minus x squared, as long as you use brackets, which you should do when you substitute, right, you're going to get the same value as this, right? Because the negative times the negative is positive. What happens if we reflect that now over the x-axis and it's down here? What's the coordinates of that point? Negative x, negative y. Do we have the same value of r? Yeah. Because you square those, they become positive. What happens if I reflect it again over the y-axis and it's down here? Then I have positive x, negative y, okay, and the value of r is still the same, right? So get familiar with this reflecting word, okay? To get from P, say this is point R down here, I could reflect it over y, then over x, or... Does it matter which order I do this in? I could reflect it over x, then over y. I get to the same place, right? Okay? That's called transformations. Hopefully it rings a bell from grade 9. So, sketch the rotation angle in standard position. Calculate the exact distance. Note the word exact. Don't make it a decimal on your calculator. Okay? This is nice because we're actually going to review some radicals in here too while we're doing this. From the origin to the given point. Here's my point. Where appropriate, write it in simplest mixed radical form. Simplify it. You should uh, anyway, but because it says it, then you have to do it. Okay, why do you have so much space there? What do you want to do first? Picture is worth a thousand words. Negative 5 and 12. This is negative 5. This is 12. Here's point P. Okay? But let's draw this. There's negative 5. There's 12. Okay, what do they want to know? The exact distance from the origin. That's this. So C squared is A squared plus B squared. Okay, so I could go negative 5 squared 
plus 12 squared is, what do I want to call this distance? Let's just go OP, the distance from the origin to that point P squared. Okay, that's Pythagoras, but there's no A, B's, and C's. Everybody okay with that? All right, so that's fine, only we want to simplify this. 25 and 144 is that distance squared. That's 169. That's OP squared. How do I get OP? Is that a perfect square? Some of us know this. Yeah. Well, that one was kind of nice. The next one won't be. Negative 2, negative 6. Okay, negative 2, negative 6. There's point Q. I want the distance from the origin. Okay? So, OQ squared is, there's my right angle, minus 2 squared plus minus 6 squared. You note I'm using brackets when I substitute. Okay, just like I said when we reviewed our test. So negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, not negative 4, plus negative 6 times negative 6, 36. So OQ squared is 40. How do I get the distance OQ? Square root, whatever you do to one side, do to the other side. Root 40. Is that simplified? No. What's a perfect square I can pull at a 40? You've been off your game for the last few days, Dan. What's a perfect square in 40? 4. Is that the largest one? Yeah, because there's no more perfect squares in 10. Okay? And then root 4, I know what that is. That's 2. So that's 2 root 10. That's as simplified as I can make it. It's exact. Did I pull out a calculator here? No. Don't make it a decimal. They want it exact. Okay? Where's that word? There it is. Okay, exact. As soon as you make a decimal, it's approximate. Okay, quick little review. <clears throat> Sine, cosine, tangent. We know this as Sokatoa. Hey, it's green. All right, so remember the sine ratio. So is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay? Cosine is a adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay? For this angle. Because if I'm talking about this one over here, well, these are going to be different, aren't they? Okay? So first thing you do, opposite the right angle, that's always the hypotenuse always the longest side. For this angle, that's the opposite. Therefore, that's the adjacent. Right? Again, if I'm talking about this angle, this isn't the opposite anymore. It's the adjacent. This one's the opposite, right? So don't get confused. All right, primary trig ratios. Well, this is grade 11. I want it in terms of this unit circle. Okay, I'm not going to draw the circle, but this is the same picture we just saw. So for theta, what is my opposite? It's y. Okay, what is my hypotenuse? Well, this is the radius of that unit circle. So the sine of theta can also be known as y over r. Okay, for cosine, that's adjacent x over hypotenuse, and for tangent, it's y over x. What does that say? You should memorize this. If this is helpful, 
sine is y over r. Um, that's what the book has here. If that's helpful, great. But what's a little acronym for the cosine? Do you think something that has c, x, and r? Is it worthwhile even trying to do that? Okay. I'm not a good memorizer. I basically figure this out every time I look at it. Okay. How long does it take to draw yourself a little picture? Okay. That's the radius for this unit circle. This is x. That's y. This is the angle we're talking about, always from the origin. Okay, it's pretty quick to draw yourself a little picture and figure this thing out. But if you like memorizing, okay, be my guest. So why do we want to know that? This point, 15.8, lies on this terminal arm of angle theta. Calculate what r is. Do we have the coordinates? Yeah. Okay, so what's x? x is 15. y is 8. So write it. If we didn't have the picture there, that's the first thing you should do. 15, positive 15, right? 8, positive 8. What is r? Exactly, not as a decimal. Okay, well, r squared is 15 squared and 8 squared, okay, or 8 squared, 15 squared, doesn't matter what order the legs are in. So r is the square root of 225 and 64, or what's that, 289? What times what is 289? Come on. Well, what goes into 289? 17 does. How many times? Yeah, and that, you know, I say we shouldn't need our calculator, but, you know, sometimes it's helpful to find what goes into it. Okay? That's 17 times 17. That's a perfect square. All right, so that's exact. No mixed radical here. Okay? All right, let's look at this. Consider an angle in standard position with this point, 1 root 3. Try to absorb as much of this as you can, because you'll see a lot of this in Math 12. Those are you who are taking it. Okay? Show the value of this angle is 60 degrees. How do I find out if that's 60 degrees or not? Do I know a ratio that has an opposite and an adjacent? The tan of theta is O over A, or just root 3, right? Because if it's over 1, you don't have to write it there. How, how do I find out the angle if I don't know it? First, make sure your calculator is in degrees. Okay, if you don't know the angle, what button are we pushing? Inverse tangent of whoop, root 3. I don't know if I need those brackets, so I better put them in. Hey, it's 60 degrees. Okay, that's one of these special angles. Well, theta, okay, is 60. All right, kind of looks like 60 too, doesn't it? Calculate what R is. Okay, we've done this a couple times already. R is the square root of 1 squared plus root 3 squared. Put that calculator down, Jake. 
the square root of, what's 1 squared? 1. What's root 3 squared? Root 3 times root 3, which is just 3. Square root of 4. R is 2. Okay? That same unit circle, I'll say it again. You're going to see that a lot in Math 12. Okay? Where this is 2, this is 1, and that's root 3. Okay? Complete the following. X was 1. Y was root 3. And R was 2. So here's where our little ratios come in. If you memorized them already, great. If not, just figure it out. Okay, sine of theta, I don't want root 3 here. I want y. Well, it is root 3. Okay, over the hypotenuse is r, but that's also 2. So sine 60 is root 3 over 2. Cosine of 60 is adjacent x over hypotenuse r. What's x? It's right here. 1 over 2. Or 1 half. Does anyone know the sine of what is 1 half? Anyone got that memorized yet? In grade 10? No? Sine of 30. 10 of 60 is opposite or y over x is 1, or, I don't have to put the 1 there, tan of 60 is just root 3. Okay, so this is, again, a little bit of investigative work. Here's the same thing, only we reflected it over the y-axis. Okay, this has coordinates what? Well, this one was 1, so if it's reflected, what's this coordinate? Negative 1, this is still root 3. Okay? So that's the coordinates. Negative 1, root 3. What's the reference angle here? Anyone want to take a guess at that? What was the angle here? 60 degrees. Guess what it is here? It's the same thing, right? So the reference angle is 60. The rotation angle then is, if this is 60, this all adds up to 180. So 180 minus 60 is 120. Okay? We did a lot of that yesterday, I hope. Sine is, well, seven yellow rabbits, if you like. What's the sine of 120? It's y over r, right? Okay, what's y? Root 3. What's r? We found that out. That's equal to 2. Okay, cosine of 120 is x over r, cxr. What's x? Now it's negative 1, r is 2. So that's minus a half. Tan is y over x, or just negative root 3. Okay, confirm these on your calculator. We haven't seen these obtuse angles before. What is sine? Let's double check. Come on, on. Sine of 120. 0.866. What's root 3? Whoop. Divided by 2. Hey, what do you know it works? Okay. Is that the same thing as sine 60? It is. Okay. So that's kind of what we're going to investigate here. Why is this the same as this one? Okay? I did 120, not 60. Okay? 
sine 240. Let's just look at its sine. What's y here? This is negative root 3, and that's still negative 1. So what's y? Negative root 3. R is still 2. Let's just look at that ratio. If that's negative the same as this, what do you think this answer is going to be as a decimal? Root 3 over 2 was 0.866, so if it's negative, then it should be negative 0.866, right? Let's go sine 240. Bingo. So that's this reference angle. Somehow that's connected to this decimal, right? The reference angle here, it's still 60. What's the rotation angle? 180 plus 60, 240. That's why this reference angle is important, because we get the same value, irregardless of what quadrant it's in. Let's just go on to the last one. Now I'm going to go over here. This distance is 1. This is negative root 3. R is still 2. If I square those, I still get the same value. What's the reference angle here? 60 degrees. Rotation angle? Well, that's 360. So if I subtract 60, I get 300. The sine of 300 is, what's y? Negative root 3 over 2. And I've already done this, haven't I? Let's check it out. The sine of 300 should be negative 0.866. Okay? It's the same value as sine 60. It's just the sine changes. Observations. It's kind of like a lab in math, right? Okay. So this is what we just did. We flipped this guy all around the four quadrants. Let's see if we can pick up a little pattern. Okay. Over here, quadrant one, the sine is y over r. All we want to know is the sine. Is y positive here? Yes, it is. Is r positive? Yeah. Okay, what's a positive divided by a positive? A positive. Let's move over to quadrant two. Sine is still y over r, right? For this angle, it's opposite over hypotenuse. Is y positive over here? Yeah. Is r positive? Yes. Okay, so what's a positive divided by a positive? Still positive. Quadrant 3, sine is still y over r, but down here is y positive or negative? It's negative, right? That's negative. r, well r is still positive. So down here in this quadrant, sine is negative. Over here, y is negative, r is positive, so the sign over there for sign is negative. Come on. Well, r, we found out, was always 2. When we square negatives, they become positive, right? And think of it this way. This is just a distance from the origin. I don't care where we go. A radius is always positive, right? But we found out r was always positive too. Okay, when we square a negative, it becomes positive. So that's what happens with sine. Now I skipped cosine and tangent just to save a little time, but we could still figure out its pattern here. Okay, what's cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse x over r. Let's write that everywhere. x over r, x over r. 
in quadrant one, is x positive? Yeah, r is always positive. So cosine in quadrant one is positive. What about quadrant two? x here is negative. r is positive. So a negative divided by a positive gives you a negative. Down here, that's a negative over a positive, which gives you a negative. Here, x is positive, r is positive, so cosine is positive. So let's just look at the difference between sine and cosine. Where, what quadrants is sine positive? Here and here. Quadrant 3 and 4, it's negative. Is that the same as cosine? No. Cosine's also positive here, but it's positive over here. So it's positive in quadrants 1 and 4. Yes, we're going to have to memorize this. Don't worry, we've got a little acronym for this. Okay? Let's just look at tangent quickly. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And if you can come out with an acronym for T and Y and X, well, be my guest, but like I say, just look at it each time and figure it out. Y is positive. X is positive. So tangent's also positive here. Okay? You with me, Dan? Sure. Okay, let's look at tangent over here. Tangents y over x, y is positive, x is negative. What's a positive divided by a negative? Negative. Tangent is y over x. Down here, y is negative, but x is also negative. What's a negative divided by negative? Tangents positive in quadrant three. Opposite over adjacent. What's y here? Negative. X is positive, and that's going to give you a negative. Okay? Which quadrants are tangent positive? Here and here. So there isn't a pattern where they're all positive, except here, and there isn't a quadrant where they're all negative. How are we going to remember this? Cast. This is how. This actually works kind of nice. As long as you remember where to start, it starts not in quadrant one, but in quadrant four. Okay, that you have to stick in your noodle. Once you got that, C A S T. It goes counterclockwise, that you have to memorize. But once you've done that, the rest should be pretty straightforward. Okay? What does this say? This is the only quadrant where cosine is positive. That's the only thing that's positive in this quadrant, is cosine. That means tangent and sine are negative. Okay, that's what this is meaning. Here, all of them are positive. Cosine, sine, and tangent. Over here, just sine is positive, the other two were negative. Right? Let's have a look. Okay? Only sine was positive, the other two were negative. Down here, only tangent is positive. So this is a this says all positive, right? Okay, there's no negatives here. But you have to know if one's positive, that means the other two are negative. Okay? Cast. Only cosine's positive. They're all positive. Only sine's positive. Only tangent's positive. And, yeah, sure, someone else. I want to start in quadrant one. I hate starting in quadrant four. So I'm going to go all sugar to coffee. Okay? If you feel like coming up with your own, feel free. I hate that one. Add sugar, not all sugar. Okay? Because I don't put sugar in my coffee. 
Right, whatever, right? I like cast. If you like this one better, go with it. But again, you have to remember which quadrant this starts in. It starts in quadrant one. This one starts in quadrant four. If you feel like making up one of your own, be my guest. But you're on your own, right? Is this on our formula sheet? No. Okay? Biology. Got to stick it in your noodle. So, with that, what do we do? Without putting it in your calculator, because you can, that would be easy, are these positive or negative? Which quadrant is this in? Not 0 to 90, not 90 to 180, not 180 to 270, that's over here. Is sine positive in quadrant 4? No, only cosine is. That's negative. Tan of 227. You notice I'm doing a picture for each one? Okay, it's easy to screw this up. Where's 227? That's 90, that's 180, that's 270. Well, it's in here. It's in quadrant 3. Is tangent positive in quadrant 3? Yes, it is. Okay, sine of 88. I'm not going to draw a picture for that. That's in quadrant 1. Is sine positive in quadrant 1? Yes, they all are. Okay, see how easy this is? Cosine of 235, that's over here in quadrant 3. Is that positive in quadrant 3? No, only tangents positive in quadrant 3. So that's going to be negative. You know what? Let's check that one. What is the cosine of 235? It's negative. Okay. Cosine of 308. That's over here in quadrant 4. It is positive in quadrant 4. Okay. Tan of 123. That's over here somewhere. Is that positive tangent quadrant 2? No. Only sine is. That's negative. Okay. Cast. Got to stick it in your noodle. Um, wee bit more. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Okay. Now, we got a bit of a procedures on what to do here. Okay? Ratios of an angle in terms of its reference angle. Remember, well, a whole 15 minutes ago, that 60 degrees... Every one of those angles we looked at in those four pictures was all connected to that 60 degrees. It all had the same number. It just had a different sign. Okay? So when we're doing these, first look for the sign. Is it positive or negative? And we use cast to do that. Then what is the measure of that reference angle? Draw a picture. This is what we did yesterday. Just find the reference angle. Combine. Okay, bake your cake. So cosine 260, no calculator, and it's not going to help you because it's not going to give you the reference angle. Okay, as the cosine of an acute angle, ah, that was reference, wasn't it? Reference was the acute angle. It was the angle closest to the x-axis. We have, well, 260. Where is that? That's pretty close to 270. Do this. On every picture, on every page, there's cast. Is cosine 260 going to be positive or negative? Only tangent is negative or positive here, right? So everything else is negative. Sine's negative, cosine is negative. Okay, what's the reference angle for 260? What's this guy right here? How far past 180 is this? What's 260 minus 180? It's 80 degrees. So cosine of 260 can also be written as the negative of cosine 80. Now, let's double check. Cosine 260 is negative 0.173. What is negative cosine 80? Check. It's the same thing. Okay? 
So all these angles they're giving you can be written in form of an acute angle using its reference angle. Okay? Just a couple, and then you can practice on your own. Rewrite the same trigonometric function of an acute angle. Okay, there was your steps. First, draw yourself a picture. Where's 140? Right there. Okay? Cast. Or do your sugar and coffee thing. Okay? Sine. Is sine positive in quadrant 2? Yes, it is. So this thing's going to be... You don't have to write the plus. I'm just going to emphasize it here. Okay? What's the reference angle? How far is it away from 180? Yeah, that's the same as sine of 40. Now this, could you check it on your calculator? Yes. Okay. 10 of 323. That's 270. That's over in quadrant 4. Okay, you don't have to do this in every question. Just make like, let's do that. Okay, just like, remember SoCatoa in grade 10? I said write it on the top of every page till you got it down. Okay, just have a look over there. It's in quadrant 4. Is tangent positive over there? No, just cosine is. So this is going to be negative for 323. What's the reference angle? Looks like it's about 37 degrees away from 360. Okay, let's double check that one. I'm not sure. I think I might have made a mistake. 10, 323 is negative 0.753. Is that the same as negative 10, 37? Bingo. Okay. Rest of these are pretty similar. I don't know. Have I done a cosine one yet? No. Cosine of 308, that's also in quadrant 4. Is cosine positive in quadrant 4? Yes, it is. So that's the same as, what's the reference angle here? Fifty-two. We need another one, or are we good? And you can double check it, but you know, you got the answers. Double check it that way. Okay, um, 10 of 199. Where is that? There's 180. That's in quadrant over here. Is tangent positive in quadrant 3? Yes, it is. So that's the same as positive 10. That's about 19 degrees past 180. Okay, those should be the same. Same value. Okay? That's it. Um, if you love memorizing, feel free. But what we're doing right here, this is it. Okay? I don't expect anybody to stick that in their head. 1 to 4, 6 to 9, and 11 and 12.